Ready? Ready for it? I'd like to welcome you guys to the regular scheduled board meeting for November 8th. Um, with that, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, with that, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda and add 5.1A, green room wall improvement that Aaron Merrill will discuss with us later. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Dragon. All right, thank you. And with that, that brings us to a presentation by Mark Farrar and the FFA officer team. We are excited tonight to celebrate a couple of different groups. Um, hopefully, we can do all three at the same, you know, the same period here. But we're going to start with FFA. Um, as you may have seen on social media, we've had uh, some some amazing accomplishments by this group. And I'm going to have Mr. Callahan come on up here. I think he's got something here to present. All right, uh, thank you for letting us come and speak to you guys at the board meeting. Our members have been very busy over the last year and even uh, last school year, and we just kind of wanted to give an update on the chapter and uh, just have a moment to thank you guys for all of your support of our program and our students. Um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started here. But uh, I'll introduce Mrs. Beth Schartz here. She is our other ag teacher. I'm Zach Callahan. Um, and the overview of County Act program is uh, this year we have about 150 students enrolled in our FFA members, uh, which is uh, some tremendous growth over the last few years since we've been here. So we're really excited that we have a lot of kids interested in our ag program and are taking our classes. Uh, and so we have four pathways that we offer at the high school that are funded through uh, the uh, U.S. Department of Education. And so Animal Systems is brand new to our school this year. Um, we were able to add that uh, last year. Uh, our second class last year for advanced animal science with the addition of the second ag position that you guys approved. So uh, through the addition of that additional uh, person in the ag program, we've been able to offer a lot more opportunities to our students. And so these are some of the classes. I focus more on the animal systems and then the power structure and technical systems over there on the right hand side. Uh, so I teach most of the welding and then animal, advanced animal, uh, and then Beth and I both share intro to ag. I'll let her talk about the other two pathways. Yeah, like uh, Zach said, um, with the addition of this position, we were able to um, significantly improve our enrollment. Um, when I first started, we had two intro to ag classes that were pretty full, and we turned a lot of students away. Um, as we added that position, we doubled the amount of intro to ag uh, classes, making that up to four, um, being able to bring a lot of uh, students into our program, um, into these pathways. Um, like you said, I focus mostly on the plant system, um, we share the intro to ag and I also teach um, one welding class and small gas engines. So the plant systems pathway is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and so it's been really fun to start to expand that and with the addition of the uh, greenhouse that is being built, um, we're even more excited to see where that pathway uh, grows in the next several years. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Mary Kane. I am the secretary for um, our chapter. So. Along with um, our chapter, we, along with other chapters as well, we were able to attend the FFA National Convention this year in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, this is a really huge and big and like very just well put together um, convention for everybody. Um, some events that we got to do is we got to go on a lot of tours. We got to go on the uh, Ozark Fishery um, Hatchery kind of tour see um, a lot of cool different um, just just amazing how well run and how big that or, uh, like fish side is we also got to do um, a tour on the Fair Oaks uh, 
dairy farm and hog production farm. Uh, it was super amazing, uh, just really nice to see how people um, just do their, organiz uh, their just organization and how well put together it was. Um, we also got to go to a Brett Young concert, which was really cool and amazing. And we also got to eat a lot of good food. So <laughs> um, we just wanted to thank the school and just supporting us and that we can able to go this year because unlike last year, we couldn't. But yeah, that's what I got for National Convention. My name's Emma Offenberg. I'm chapter vice president. So back in May, we had all our state CDs, and we were fortunate enough to put together a horse team that actually won state this year. So at the national convention that Mary was just talking about, we competed for a national title. And our team got eighth overall, which was very exciting. I think there were 39 or 40 total teams that competed. Um, and then they rank out all the individuals as gold, silver, bronze. So I was fortunate enough to be a gold individual. Um, Dolan Regeer, Emma Myers, and Isabel Barker were all silver individuals. We worked really hard for this. We met twice a week since May, and Callahan helped us a lot, and we had a lot of speakers come in, some K-State people that were on the K-State horse judging team previously. And so that was exciting. Um, I'm Rachel Kessinger. I'm the reporter for this officer team chapter. Um, I was on the state for the land judging team, and we didn't do too good in district, but we turned we turned around, did pretty good for state, placing first. Um, Gabriel Offenhoffen placing first, Graham Foley placing second, Dalton Regeer placing eighth, and myself placing tenth. So we're gonna start having practices pretty soon to hopefully do really good in nationals. Hello, my name is Dalton Regeer, and I'm the chapter president. So. Fortunately, last year uh, in April, we were able to host um, a Chieftain Challenge, which is one of our career development events. Since last year we had a lot of COVID challenges, a lot of schools did not have the fortunate opportunity to go to any of the events. So we hosted one last year right before our May State CEs, and we ended up having over a total of 20 different FFA chapters from across the state attend, and we had approximately around 350 members join us there. Uh, we were able to put on five different career development events, livestock judging, uh, poultry evaluation, floral culture, veterinary science, and entomology. Um, and then we also were, were hoping this year that we can uh, expand on this and add a several, uh, few more events to this and hopefully uh, get more students from across the states to hopefully join. And this was really important because um, Lewisburg, who is um, within our district, uh, they had not gone to any events, and they ended up um, going to our poultry evaluation. That was the first time they had ever gone to there. And then back in May, they ended up winning state, and then ended up on going to nationals, and I believe they placed in the top 10 at nationals. So this was a really big event for us, so thank you. All right, uh, I'm just gonna briefly mention uh, welding classes. So we're gonna give a little bit of an update on what we do in our classes. Uh, none of these are my welding students, but um, the board uh, approved the purchase of this brand new plasma cutter up here. I kind of have a short video of it uh, that we've been putting to use, and we've been able to collaborate with the automotive program with Mr. Tony Maurer. We uh, helped make all their awards for their car show, uh, and then our welding students built these benches. They built two of them that were auctioned off, and they did really well. Um, so our welding students, uh, they get to work on really cool projects, and we just thank you guys for your support on helping them achieve that. So in our small gas engines class, um, this is a class we added a year and a half ago. Uh, even Mary is fortunate enough to be in one of these classes and she seems, uh, seems to be enjoying it. Um, but we got a donation from Kohler of over, uh, of over 24, sorry, 24 engines totaling over $16,000 uh, uh, the summer before last. But bringing those into the classroom and allowing students to um, tear down and build those um, during their first semester. Um, so this is a picture of one of those kind of in their teardown process, and then the other one is Clay Park uh, getting his engine to run for the first time after he completely tore it down to absolutely nothing and putting it back together. So it's a, an extremely fun class that kids get to have a first, um, first hands-on experience. In our, um, so I went through the animal science class last year, and I'm currently in advanced animal science. 
So some of the things we do in those animal science classes are dissections of fetal pigs, um, sheep and cows. Uh, we cut actually baby, baby animals out of uteruses. Um, we've done some artificial insemination practice in there. And a lot of the kids that are in those pathways are also exhibiting animals at the fair. So it's cool to see all the things we learn in the class be put into real world work. Um, we also this year went on a tour at Heartland Equine Hospital in Baser, and I think we're going to go on a few more tours this year. So in this class, um, I've already been to the horticulture pathway, I'm in the absent port right now. Um, Jessica has an example of something we do in there right now. Uh, the kids put together some greenhouses after learning about different types of structures of them. Uh, we're going to be talking about our, our new greenhouse in a bit. Some other things we do in there is we do some entomology right now, which is a study of bugs. Um, we're going to do some identification later on this year to hopefully do really good in the floriculture CDE. And for homecoming, we actually got to put together some really cute corsages and stuff. So I'm Jessica Kessinger, I'm the committee director for this chapter, and as you can see on the left side, that's our old greenhouse, and on the right side is our new greenhouse. It went from 0% to full automation, we have much more uh, heating and cooling, which we didn't have before, and a really big upgrade in watering systems. All right, so I'm Grant Foley. I'm the chapter treasurer, and I'm here to, and I would like to talk about a really fun event that we had a couple weeks ago. So what we actually put together, like around two months ago, was this event called for teaching our teachers about like really stuff, like the, all the other agricultural pathways that we offer here, and like all the different elements that are included when it comes to this. We actually, we had a couple of teachers uh, milk some goats up there. We even had Mr. Ferrar ride a horse. <laughs> <laughs> And it was a very fun event. We had uh, animal ID stations, we had nutrition label stations, and tried out stations. It was a very positive event. And the next Teaching Teachers event that we will have will be in December. It's going to be over Ag Mechanics, and it's open to all district staff. My name is Sarah Celine. I'm the student advisor. We do a lot of community service. We love putting stuff together for people to really reach out to our community and show them what we can do and give back to the community. So we've done an old folks home petting zoo not too long ago. We went to the home. We brought some animals. And we brought goats, little goats, big goats, a bucket calf, a dog, a rabbit. Even a duck, somebody walked a duck around. And as you can see, they had a really good time. Like that man, that gentleman in the picture, they really love seeing the animals and seeing us bring those things out. That was a very fun time. We also did at the Tommy Days a petting zoo as well and brought out some animals that people got to come and see. Um, some other things we do for community service is our toiletry drive. We started that last year just a little bit, try to get some things for our community, some things people need, lots of necessities, and this year we're gonna to try to go bigger to really get things and help people out in our community. And then last year, we did an angel tree, so we got a list for some children of things they needed, like clothes, maybe a few toys, lots of important stuff that they need that they might not have or they need more of. All right, and then just to wrap a couple things up, one of the main things that really helps our chapter to function and go on all these amazing trips like the National Convention and host the Teeth and Challenge and go to these competitions are our fundraising programs. So what we, one of our main fundraisers is like right before the year starts and to sponsor all our different t-shirt designs. Uh, all the officer team members, including myself, went on business visits to different businesses to ask for donations and possibly um, even more support throughout the year and a lot of them offered kind donations and we were lucky enough to sponsor our t-shirts and this really helps us to also this also really helps us to fund all our competitions especially when it comes to national convention and these state competitions as well and then another main fundraiser that really helps our chapter to function is our annual fruit sale fundraiser that we have 
it's mostly, we go through, we sell through four season sites and it goes through the entire month of October where all like 150 chapter members are going from business to business or house to house explaining like this is what we're selling, do you want to order something or provide a donation to help our chapter or to go to these really fun events and do a lot of fun, other cool things as well. And then all the, do and all the, and when it comes to all these other donations as well, a lot of these, a lot of the dues for the FFA members, especially when it comes to different fees and other different transportation costs and other things for all these events, it really helps to cover those as well. And it, it's really been a huge help from the community to provide us with all the funds and materials that we've needed for our year. And we just really appreciate all their services. Thank you. All right, thank you for listening to our students' presentation. Again, we just, these are our sponsors for this year. Uh, each of these sponsors help pay for every single student to be an FFA member. Uh, we truly believe that FFA is an extremely beneficial organization. Uh, so all these businesses also believe that and help pay for all 150 students to be FFA members, which is not a cheap cost, but again, we think it's such a value to the students that uh, we just really appreciate their support. They also uh, make sure every student uh, had a free FFA t-shirt. So again, thank you all for your support and for our community support. If you're excited about supporting us, we have a few things that uh, we wanted to highlight um, upcoming through our year. So, um, National Cafe Week is in uh, the third week of February. We always host our business and breakfast. Um, following that, we also have an open house that year. That was last year, was our first year for that. And this year, we're also trying to kick off a new event. Um, on April 2nd, I'll let Mr. Callahan talk a little bit more. Yeah, I've kind of been working uh, with Mr. Philip Kemp on this, but this is something that we're really excited about. Uh, we're going to host something called a dice run where people can go out on their ATVs or Jeeps. Uh, we kind of have a, a ride to go around Leavenworth County in, uh, and all the proceeds that they get for that will benefit our VFW. So again, we really love to give back to our community since they support us so much. So uh, all the funds, again, will be uh, given back to them to support them and their park here in town, which is such a wonderful asset. So uh, these events in the spring, you all are welcome to attend. Um, if you have an ATV, we'd love to have you out on April 2nd. Um, I guess for anybody else in the community. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. One more. I'll finish it. Could we have Mr. Farrar a picture of Farrar riding a different animal each year? <laughs> so those uh, teach the teachers event was uh, that was a really neat event. Um, as you can see. Uh, our staff learned a lot that day, and I got to learn how to milk a goat. And I will not soon forget that experience. <laughs> it was fun. Soccer team, can you come up? So this weekend was an exciting weekend as our soccer team went to Topeka to compete in the state championship, the final four. And I'm very pleased to announce and introduce you to the public school state champions in Kansas. <laughs> so that's you guys, and we're very proud. Um, watching, watching them compete against the best of the best. Um, and in the, in the third place game, I witnessed some things that filled my heart. And that is their determination, their competitive spirit, and they didn't quit. And with, what, three minutes left, we were in a hole. And they found a way to tie it up and get to overtime, and we couldn't be more proud. So, seniors, anybody want to say anything? Uh, I'll just say, I'm Kyler Keatsman. Uh, I'm just going to talk about us in the tournament or whatever. So, we went into the tournament ranked seventh, and we played the 10 seed, Chinook, beat them. And then we played the two seed, Baldwin at Baker University because that was the day it was really raining and pouring and stuff and we managed to beat the two seed as a seven seed and then we played Eudora who was the four seed and then we beat them on their turf too and then that took us to the tournament and yeah and then we lost and then we went to the third place game and we yeah, managed to beat uh, Augusta who was the number one seed on the west side and they also were the highest goal scoring team in Kansas I believe and managed to beat them in double overtime, so, yep, that's basically it. There you go.
Yeah, congratulations. Good Bye. job. In just the fifth year of the program, our girls placed fourth in the state, and we got our very first state champion, Haiti York. Congratulations. That, that is an actual state champion, right? Not just public schools, this was all state. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that, um, we had a terrific year. Um, the girls' team together uh, performed, and we finished fourth. Um, the girls team together won four team or four tournaments during the year. We placed second in three of them. Um, our worst uh, position was in, in a fourth at the state tournament, but the girls battled greatly in that. Um, on top of Hayden uh, winning her seven tournaments out of the ten she had this year, um, the girls just all improved so much and had spectacular years. I think every one of them had personal best and uh, it was a wonderful fun ride. Um, I was a little disappointed we didn't get our walkout music at the uh, football game because we were <laughs> expecting Amish Paradise and they wouldn't let us walk out to it and do that so but it was a fun ride. Um, I, I credit all my parents they are raising some of the most wonderful girls around and they just listen and do that and I wish Bothwell was here because he always criticizes me that all the kids did that in spite of the coaching. That is correct. They did it all in spite of the coaching and they were still able to come out on top. And now I look forward because I look out here and I see a lot of my boys of parents. We're going to hopefully produce that and do that again with the boys season. So, And we're looking forward to great things next year because we're going to return five of these uh, girls back for next year. So we got a good summer of work and uh, maybe we can do some more damage next year. And then we can have a, an actual state champion team despite uh, the private schools <laughs> up there and doing that. So we're going to battle and fight all we can. So. Hey, Hayden, what, what did you score that last round? Uh, 75. Oh, man. Mm. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. <laughs> so. Anything else you want me to say? Yeah, it's, sure? it's been a, a good fall, and we're looking forward to building on it. So. With that, we'll move on to item 1.5 presentation from Aaron Merrill with SPN Associates. Things are really starting to come together over at the new learning center. Um, so hopefully you all had a chance to, if you haven't been in the building, um, see these pictures in your packet. Uh, this one is on the one of the new um, wet laboratories with all the built-in uh, epoxy countertop casework and built-in sinks and a uh, new hood um, for all the science lab work. Also showing a picture here of the uh, flexible learning lab areas outside the classrooms. There'll be you know, furniture and a TV for presentation on this wall, but you can see the carpet going in, final painting, the acoustical baffles up in the ceiling. So it's really coming together. Um, also got the patio outside of the dining area. They've installed the um, the new benches out there for outdoor eating, as well as kind of final finishes in cleaning and the cafeteria with the booth area and main hallway with um, 
the display cabinets. So some really great finishes coming together and uh, heading towards punch list uh, coming later this month. So, all right, to the less pretty stuff, um, but still in good shape. Budget-wise, uh, everything's holding tight with the total bond funds, um, 51.4 million, the construction GMP, um, and soft costs and contingencies are still in really good shape. The district GMP contingency, um, see the forecast here, there's just a couple small um, small things that the town board is pricing right now uh, for a few changes to the project, but nothing major. And then on the facility improvement allowance, uh, the forecast down there is um, for some of the items we're going to talk about on the action item list later tonight. Uh, sub substantial completion dates. So the Learning Center substantial completion date target has always been uh, November 29th. Um, and we look to hit that with the punch list uh, upcoming here at the end of the month. Key deliveries uh, and inspections. So we did receive the appliance delivery on uh, November 1st. I have it, still have it highlighted in yellow because um, when I put this report together, we were still struggling with the um, refrigerators, which have been hard to come by in the quantity needed for the project. But we found seven refrigerators at Costco and they're scheduled to be delivered on the 16th. So um, that should be enough for this phase of the project. Um, so that, Fingers crossed that holds tight and we'll be good on all the appliances. So we got those delivered and moved in and starting to install. Um, on the third, the moving company delivered um, all the move boxes to the, all the teachers and I was talking to Mr. Farrar earlier, teachers have started to work on packing and decluttering and they got some instructions on, on how to do all that. <clears throat> So we are breaking punch list activities up into two separate days, so we don't all go crazy. Um, we'll be punching out building D and E on the 19th, and following with building F on the 30th, just before the furniture delivers um, the following day. Other key milestone dates, uh, working with Barb and the kitchen staff on um, state health inspection um, upcoming later this month once they get everything kind of cleaned up and uh, moved out of there. The TCO inspection, um, they had a preliminary TCO inspection on the 5th that all passed. There's one minor um, issue with the communication of the elevator, uh, there's an extra part that had to get installed um, for the alarm monitoring, so they're doing that this week and we'll get that reinspected. Um, but the all the fire alarm and life safety elements have, have passed inspection at this point. So that's a big milestone. Um, McCown Gorn's been doing a great job buttoning, buttoning up all those details. So as I mentioned before, Learning Center FF and E install the furniture from Scott Rice uh, will start showing up on uh, December 1st. And they're coming to OAC meeting uh, in the next week or two to um, talk about logistics and delivery plans and um, try to make that go very smooth. And then the move, uh, move activities from East and West Campus into the new Learning Center will start um, on the evening of the 20th. And then we'll kick off the phase three, if you will, the um, demolition and abatement of the existing East Campus. So we're going to do abatement in two separate phases, to try and get demo started. That'll start as soon as we can get those rooms cleaned out on the 27th. Um, and then West Campus abatement will follow um, the 1st of January. And... Um, with the demo and clearing the site, it probably won't look like much for a couple months. So I kind of threw on here, um, the set precast date is actually 
right now it's going to be June 7th, so you'll see, you know, footings, foundations, all the stuff you can't really see from the road up until that point. But they will be working for sure. <clears throat> Any questions on schedule or upcoming activities? So just a few other um, things going on with the project. We've mentioned in past reports that we're revisiting the schedule and access for the West Campus and have determined to divide that work into two phases to allow the southern half of the building um, to be accessible during the remaining basketball season through the end of February. So um, they'll start the demolition and abatement activities of the north half and then take over the south half um, in the 1st of March, still with the targeted completion of those West Campus renovations by the end of July. So update on the temporary sidewalk and drainage uh, that we've been discussing. And um, hopefully you guys had a chance to look through this. I don't know how much time you wanna spend, um, but <clears throat> The engineers did go back and do some additional survey work and additional um, drainage design, modified the location of the proposed location of the temporary sidewalk um, and from the board's direction designed it so it could be expanded on. Um, so it would be originally for it as a five foot sidewalk right along here. And so if you remember, it was closer right up next to the proposed fence line, future fence line. So they pulled it back to allow that drainage, <coughs> that grading to be done. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the future five foot, if it were to be widened <coughs> in the future to a 10 foot sidewalk, would be added onto the north side of that. <coughs> So the you can see the revised proposed contour lines um, still dealing with just some fixed elevations kind of around the shot put area, but the revised drainage is intended to get everything into the ditch before you get to um, to that fixed elevation. If um, if the district elects to replace this fence down on this side of the property in the future, um, there would be some additional grading at that point, but can't really do it right now with the fence um, where it's at. So that's why that's not showing on there. I really appreciate y'all taking another look at that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, pulling it back, you know, Mark said it helps a little bit in getting that drain to really force into the ditch and stay in the ditch. So. I have a question. Yeah. So Drew mentioned at one point that once you get down there, then you can't, you would have to go. So if you were in a wheelchair, you would have to go back up on the sidewalk and around to get to the bathrooms or the concessions. So is that something that you've looked into trying to connect that? So if you're down, like if you go down that sidewalk to the shop foot area and then you want to go to the restrooms or the concession or even up to the grandstands, then is there a way to connect that so that that's a possibility? I didn't know if that was something that was looked into, if that was just a conversation. Yeah, I, I think this was to get you, you know, to the facility and the stands. <coughs> the long-term accessible route would be the permanent station on the south side. Um, and honestly, it was not looked at once you get inside those gates. Yeah, uh, one of the things we had talked about, Kaya, was <clears throat> when we host track meets, maybe putting some ADA accessible port port johns in that area so that you wouldn't have to go all the way over to the concessions. It's going to be difficult, I think, any, however we do it. I'm not sure how we can connect that I, without going on the track. Is that yeah. what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, the current path the forces track. you to go on the track. Yeah, so currently you have to be on the track. Mm -hmm. or, or you have to put sidewalk behind yeah. back around you know because we have that shed there and yeah. it's like you got to get around that right. shed and then there's that 
there's nothing paved all the way to the grand. We just, state. we just haven't had a lot of conversation about. Not nothing about inside business. inside the boundaries of right. the, the field now. On the southwest corner of the football field, there is that going to be paved? That area that's currently currently gravel. Rock. Yeah, yeah, gravel. Mm -hmm. Yes, that will be a a new. Um, paved lot with dedicated um, handicap stalls. And we're not trying to sidestep your question, but I, I just don't think we've looked at it that close yet. Well, can we? Yeah, I mean, come yeah. say, add it well, to your... Yeah, the, I just didn't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Just, really well, I, I think it's fair to say that that is a consideration for ADA access, but it wasn't a requirement right. to connect it all so this Correct. would be an added scope item mm -hmm. uh, then then the i think the question is is you know is is it a real scenario or problem that we need to mitigate you know if somebody's in that or how long is it kind of goes like that'd be great to have but it's, how big of a problem is it yeah i don't know nobody's ever approached this about the issue that i know of so Okay. But we'll add it. Take a look. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I definitely want to make sure it's. Did that answer your question? Did you have some? Hi. Speak up. <laughs> <What are> we... <laughs> are you afraid I'm not going to speak up? No. I, <laughs> I love that. I Could you, you say that louder? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Without being there, having a picture there, maybe I'm incorrect, but I feel like from being down there that you should be able to go from the shot put area and it wouldn't take that much more cement to then allow someone to go from that shot put area, either in front or behind the shed. Mm -hmm. And then there's only stairway on that end of the bleachers, but then there could be a ramp instead of a stairway and bleachers, and then you could go up the ramp across the front of the bleachers and then there is already an existing ramp down the other side of the bleachers and then you end up yeah, I, by I the ticket you. booth. I got thing. you. Right? I got you. I, I understand, I what, I understand big, what you're saying. I, I don't think it would be a big Well, um, but I mean if you were going to do something like that, I don't disagree, but then you have to man another gate, right? Um, or not. not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For track yeah. meets, yeah. probably yeah. not. We're going to be manning that area anyway for football for a year. Mm -hmm. um, show that it's something to consider. I know exactly. Probably the easiest thing to do is if you want to put a sidewalk behind. I wish I could go right behind this. Cast this up there. Yeah. I mean, or that. But hey, in the, in the new boardroom, maybe. So. Okay. Sure that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not that far. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, well, you I have, you have, those, I, you have those student bleachers though. Right. The front. It's, yeah. it's, it's right. student bleachers the, there. The bullpen area. Yeah. I just don't like the idea of sidewalks to nowhere. So yeah. I understand it's a to a destination, but it's not a full right loop. Right. So yeah. if you get down there, like, I mean, anybody, yeah. even if it's muddy or wet, then you're just traveling through mud and dirt or whatever. Well, it, dump, it dumps you out onto a consistently paved surface um, inside because it you come out here and you connect to this sidewalk. Oh, it's really hard to see on the screen. Um, the sidewalk in front of the shed? Yeah. And then it goes to dirt, though. There's no sidewalk connecting the, where the shed is to the bleachers, is there? No. You have to go on the track. You, you have, have to go, go on, on the, the track. track. Yeah. It's yeah. Only. So then that's not an option during any school event. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I, we'll we'll have to go down there and look at it a little closer. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's Hi. a good point. Okay. <clears throat> uh, fixtures, furniture, and equipment. I um, already mentioned the furniture will start showing up uh, here the 1st of December. And we have been going through our final design meetings on the West Campus and athletics. And um, that information, the final design and budget will be assembled for presentation at next month's board meeting. All right. Digital monument sign. So we haven't talked about this a whole lot, but um, there's been a lot of behind the scenes, back and forth. Um, 
trying to come up with a design that was always in the budget and intended to be um, a digital monument sign out in front of the new uh, building right here. So here's your new main entry. Um, here's the, the loop. So um, there is a location made here for digital monument sign. So after some back and forth and looking at several different options, um, this is kind of the um, design intent that was selected. This is the, the screen here in the middle that can um, display the, uh, the events and things that are going on at school. And I, I think there's still some discussion about what actually goes signage wise, what these two um, sides say, whether it's THS or Tonganoxy or a T logo. Um, but uh, that is what, and this, uh, this design fits within the budget allowed, so uh, that will get procured and get that, get that coming to be installed. So what was the discussion, or why was it determined that it going, that's next to the building, right? Yeah. Uh, this this is not an accurate representation of where it says, it's, it's right it's up here. here. That's the building. This yeah. is the building. Oh, so you can, when you're driving by the highway, you see it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you, you know, the, the building kind of sits lower than the highway at that point, but the sign location is up on the, the higher part by just before you go into the ditch. How big is it? Oh, well, so here's I got, a person. I got it right here. Oh, there's a person. Do you have the measurements yeah, there? It's 10 by, well, you can see it there. Yeah, 10 by 8. It's the middle one. It's pretty good size. Yeah. The screen itself is um, five by six, if I remember right. So it does not currently meet the um, signage criteria of your zoning, but that is part of this. Um, the signage company will um, take it through that, that process, which Everything <coughs> indicated shouldn't be an issue. Um, it's only not in the design criteria because the school is zoned residential, but because you are on the highway, it is applies more to the commercial zoning. And does it change in, in brightness depending on light and dark, or you know, because you know, as you're driving by at night, does it does it like dim down or? It's a good question. It's it's a truly digital sign. It's not like the the, the, dot. the, the dots, it's right. actually like a screen. Yes, yes, okay. it's actually like a screen, like an LED screen. Um, but I can ask that question, it's a good question. Not yeah. ask how that, how that works. I like that, that's, I think this sign will be awesome because sometimes you, you don't, I mean, you don't know when you drive by it and see it often enough, you might show up at something. The only thing we're not real sure yet, we did, Aaron mentioned was THS on both sides. We didn't have a better idea if there's something that might fit in there that would be appropriate. We, yeah. We got to make up our mind. We had a shorter name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of hard to get it all in there. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, high school composites were um, successfully relocated and uh, look really great. I did not include a picture of it, um, but if you guys are by the school, they're all hanging in the TCAC hallway and even had them come back and do a few more than we originally planned uh, because they fit, um, fit in a smaller space than we thought they would. So there's a few boxes um, still stored of the oldest ones that will find a home in West Campus when it is renovated. Move management, as I mentioned, the boxes have been delivered, packing training has been done, and the move will take place starting the evening of December 20th through the 22nd. Uh, Lauren and his team, I know, have been working on um, 
open house sale of remaining furniture and potential auction for um, kitchen equipment and, and getting rid of things that will not be relocated. Owner training, we've started, McCown Gordon has put together a list of all the new systems and equipment that require some owner training and we're starting to get those scheduled um, with Mitch and Mark and Forrest and the rest of the uh, staff. And that'll start happening here over the next um, four to six weeks. Can I ask a quick question about the composites? Yeah. Those, how are they attached to the wall? Because I know they're pretty low. Like a lot of they're them are really low. Four screws. Okay. Yeah. They're, not they're pretty still. Yeah, they're very secure. I, I, I like it. Okay. Yeah. They're they're anchored into the mm -hmm. into the CME wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I figured so. Yeah. But yeah, you'll break the the composite itself before you knock it off the wall. Hey, Lauren, on the owner training, what do we have in place to kind of capture and memorialize that training? You know, it's it's a video. Yeah. Everything. I mean, they, yeah, they went over that uh, with yeah. Mitch and I think maybe Mark a little bit, but it's all, in case there is turnover, yeah, they, there is that ability to, to go back and review all those videos. Yeah. yeah. It'll all be videotaped. You also have, you know, the, the digital manuals of everything. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty thorough. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a matter so of, you know. You're showing your, you know, videotape. Nobody knows what that means anymore. <laughs> What's the proper term? Record it. I was just listening to a podcast about the how VHS players in the eighties cost four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no tape. And now nobody has them anymore. I know. Um, all right. Um, it'll be podcasted. I don't know. Something YouTube. Like YouTube. TikTok. <laughs> Uh, project design enhancements. So this is last item, um, and if there's no other questions, I'll wait, and then we'll switch to um, that other document. I did add. We talked about last time at the bottom of the contingency log, showing the current percentages used of each contingency line item. Um, the overall project by dollar value, of, dollar value of construction costs is 58% complete. So, um, as you can see, we're doing in really good shape with, in terms of percentage. Um, we'll be meeting with the McCown Gordon team later this month. Um, we're actually doing a full project review with them, um, sitting down McCown's team, the district team, myself, um, the design team, and talking about how things went in the first or in this phase and how we work together and what can be changed or improved upon. Um, one of the items that we'll talk about is um, the contingency and the remaining risks in the project and um, kind of evaluate where everything stands on that. Okay, any other questions? I have a quick question. Yes, I may be a little bit off schedule, so it may be, you may need to talk about it. Once we move into that building, um, What's the timeline for if things don't work correctly? Like we have dead landscaping or doors don't shut properly or whatever it might be. What's the timeline for that to be repaired and fixed if that happens? So the great thing about having a phase two, at least right now, or I guess it's phase three, but um, you know, McCown Gordon will still be on site. So it'll be really easy to get their attention and get them over there and fix things. I mean, um, so if a teacher, I think to your point is like, a teacher has something going on. Who does she? Who does he or her talk they to? They should report it to Mr. Farrar, um, who can then report it to mm -hmm. uh, myself or to Ben Killingsworth um, to get it get it fixed. And all of that is covered. Yes. So you have you have a one year um, workmanship warranty. So anything that that falls under a, a workmanship issue is covered for one year. And just before the expiration of that one year, we'll walk the whole building. And make sure that there's nothing that just has gone unreported that needs to be fixed. Then certain materials and equipment will have um, longer, you know, manufacturer warranties like <coughs> top units and um, mechanical components, and those vary depending on what they are. But um, will all be part of the the warranty documents um, assembled at the end of the phase. So yeah, any any time you know during that one year or after the one year. If 
you know, there's anything that the um, staff feels like is a warranty issue, you know, they call myself or um, the McCown Gordon team to get it uh, addressed. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so revisiting our project enhancement log. Um, we've got one, one um, smaller item here. Well, really, you know, two compared to last month's smaller items um, to discuss. This first one is existing gym east rooms. So this has been part of this log for a while. That was one we put off because we didn't really <clears throat> need to make a decision on it. But as um, the county prepares to begin, work over in the gym area um, you just want to have this agreed to and um, have a plan in place so the, now which one was that um, it's line item four, four okay. existing gym east rooms so total cost of approximately twenty five thousand give or take thousand um, dollars we did not go back and get updated pricing on this but um it's mostly finishes so costs you've got this area right here yes so this is your existing gymnasium um up is north so these uh yellow highlighted rooms are currently the um let's zoom in here um, are the current training room down here. The project already includes cutting a hallway in from the new gym, which will be over here to the right, into the existing gym. So that's shown there. Um, and then we have the, the storage room to the north. And as I was playing around here, my yellows got moved. So there we go. Um, this is What's labeled storage here is currently the um, film room or the meeting table in there. And then you have uh, the existing uh, referee room and a little restroom and shower in there. So after discussions and re-looking at the, the plan and programming, the intent is to use this training room and this media room and convert them into um, a cheerleader and dance team warm-up room. So the, addition, the additions part of this 25,000 is taking this um, existing training room. There's kind of a uh, floor sink troffer in the corner and um, disconnecting the plumbing to that and building a platform over it which would then all be um, have new flooring put down in that room and um, adding mirrors along one of the walls um, and just getting and getting the whole room a fresh coat of paint. Similarly with um, the existing media room here, getting new flooring, fresh coat of paint and adding some mirrors on the wall for, for the teams to warm up with. Do they have lockers or places to store their stuff or their gear? No, not currently. I don't, they, I don't believe they have that in their current space. Yeah, they do. They drop their stuff off. Though, they like just that. put it in bags. Put it in bags, but they, they leave put it in bags, in they leave it in there. Yeah. yeah. And then the referee room, um, again, just cleaning it up a little bit, fresh coat of paint, um, new flooring. The restroom has had some ceiling leaks over the years, uh, so they're gonna, it's a, Hard lid ceiling in there. Get a new um, a new ceiling and clean that clean that restroom up with a new light fixture in there as well. Okay. <clears throat> so really cosmetic finishes just to make those those rooms workable for um, their new purpose. How big are those rooms? Pretty, mm -hmm. pretty good size. Yeah. Underneath there, I mean yeah. the, with the dance and, and for the for their walk yeah. room, they're sufficient. They're it's comparable. I would. Is it bigger than what the what the dance team currently has? Yes. Yeah, it's bigger. Uh, longer. Obviously. Yeah, longer is, is what I would say. And it has so like ten oh. by twelve. Or? No, yeah, no, no, no. I'm looking at this. It's it's at least twenty. Uh, 
I'd say this is at least 30 feet by 15 feet or so. Good. Um, and then eight foot tall. Oh, it's a tall seat. Eight or nine. It, it's the it's steps of the glacier, so it goes yeah. aggressive. It's definitely a taller ceiling than the room they have right now back behind um, on the south side of the gym that has, you know, the slope ceiling down. Um, What's your, why are you asking that question? Just curiosity or is there something that you're... I, I'm just trying to visualize it. I mean, why, well... I mean, I'm just... My thought process may not make sense. It's just brainstorming, but... That's um, answer. But it says that we rejected painting the existing gym walls above the bleachers and the bleacher risers and... And so we, you know, didn't, we're not going to pay to do that. And that's where everybody sees, but we're going to paint these rooms that, you know, spend $25,000 and, and up, make these rooms pretty that nobody, I mean, the, you know, the teams will use, obviously, let me start by saying, so it's not misinterpreted that, of course, I want everything to be amazing and wonderful and top class, like first class, whatever, but I'm just trying to see. I think sometimes in these processes, you know, you're like painting the existing walls above the bleachers, you know, at the time when we looked at the priorities was at the bottom of the list, of course, but now we're looking at new things. and. If I have, like, if I look by at those side by side, I just feel like maybe there's a compromise. Maybe we can do half and half or something. I mean, I don't know, but I'm just saying I don't. I don't think it's one or the other necessarily. Right. And to clarify, the rejecting of the painting of the bleachers was saying that that it was going to be done out of capital or you know yeah. regular maintenance. We, we, we recognize that we would like to paint the gym, and so that's just another discussion that we're going to have down the road. That's not off of our target list. Um, it okay. kind of it kind of got moved around in the priority list as we were moving through this. This area here is pretty rough. I mean, this really needs to be upgraded. And then I think we'll address at some point the gym itself, as far as the painting on the walls above and below. Um, we'll take a look at that. But so basically, these rooms right now are the purpose is something else. Yes. And you're yeah. gutting them and making them into a. So when you are done, you walk into the room and it looks like a dance room. It does right. not look like it was right. a garage and you tried to make it a bedroom. It'll it'll be very nice. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, is I it, think the only like, caveat this, to that is in, in this room here. It's currently the training room. Um, we were leaving the sinks. But on the there's, you know, there's some sinks on the wall. But I think that was seen as a, as a positive thing. They can, you know, there's a there's a uh, water fountain out in the hallway, but um, just access to water and whatever. But, so then, are the sinks upgraded to match the rest of the room, or is it we have a very old sink and the rest of the room is brand new? I will be completely honest. I don't remember what those sinks look like. Um, Ferrari, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> but there's a couple sinks on the wall in the current training room, in Patfield's room, and Kai was asking the question of what what those look like. Um, are they, you know, in a decent condition where they'll look out of place if we, you know, paint the room and yeah. put new flooring? Um, actually, because I know Kai is an expert in the bathrooms. <laughs> So, so they are actually in way better shape than the bathrooms that you know. Well, I would hope. <laughs> I mean, that is not hard. That's not the question, though. So the question is, do you are you going to recognize that these are old sinks in a brand new space, or? Well, they're cohesive. Yes. Let's Could easily a, take the sinks out. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, just take um, I mean, I, I can't even remember. Yeah. I, I guess, Drew, now everyone's regretting that you asked me the question. <laughs> that's, that's why we're here. I guess yeah. the whole I'm not. point. Justin might be, but I'm not. <laughs> the whole point is that 
I'm all for having, I mean, I, I think it's fabulous. They should have a space that's amazing, but, but we're taking an old space and just, I just want to make sure that then when you walk in, if you're spending $25,000 on it, then you walk in it, it should look like a new space, right? It should be matched the, mm -hmm. and yeah. So, and I think all this was done with a lens of being fiscally responsible, getting the room yeah. to, to a, a upgraded condition that's usable for the new purpose, but not, you know, not, not going over the top. Right. So it, it's really, you know, I, those things can be done. I think it's up to um, the district and the board of what, what you guys, how far you want to take that yeah. from a budget perspective. <coughs> so. It's going to be a tremendous improvement over what they have. Yeah. And those things can always be replaced. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. They end up like, uh, I mean, if it looks horrible, but then you they just go won't. in there and you I mean, that's the point. Like, like they will if you don't do it when you do the project, it's like, fit, buy, I used to sell real estate. You buy a house, you're going to finish the basement later. The only time people finish the basement is when they're getting ready to sell and they yeah. want to finish yeah. the we'll basement. Like, yeah. I mean, you either do it now or it's never happening. We yeah. all know that, right? So well, and so then I think the question is, if you're going to do that, do you replace them with new sinks or do you just cap off the sinks and, you know, put a wall over it? Because, like I said, there is a, a water fountain <clears throat> right out here in this hallway, so you don't really need the sinks for the, the purpose of the room. So you could just, um, could just cap that plumbing off and abandon it and have no sinks. So... Um, I think that's, we'd be looking for a direction on mm -hmm. we'll what to do there. Um, okay, so the one other item that we added, that was added to the agenda at the beginning of the meeting um, that just kind of came up this week, um, it's going to be the word of the week. It's called a cyclorama wall. Um, so this is in the green room, in the, the, film, the new film room. For the high school. The current design is for um, just a painted green wall, which would allow you know green screen filming behind it. And Mark, you're going to jump in and support me when I mess this up. <clears throat> so this product um, creates a curvature at the floor and at the hard right corner between two walls that allows for Depth. Depth in um, video recording that somebody can stand in space and be in a digital green screen environment versus, you know, waist up um, green screen type filming. The guy explained it to me like, what you have now is like your weatherman standing in front of a green screen. This allows you to be like ESPN where you're, you know, standing in a space with digital background behind you. What does that allow us to do that we, like... I'm going to have to have Mark jump in on that <laughs> So, from an educational standpoint. Yeah. I think, kind of like she said, it gives us a little more versatility. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be a, a video production expert. However, I can say that I've spoken with <laughs> Mesa Linwood and Bonner Springs, and the one thing they said was make sure you do it this way. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but go ahead. Who teaches that? Or do we have a class that's... Preston Troyer teaches that class. Oh, okay. and, what, and what is the class, like, other than? It's video productions. Okay. Is that the only video production class we have? Uh, um, I would anticipate us, um, you know, trying to trying to grow what our, what we can do. Because I know what Baser class. has, but they have a whole series of classes that use that. Well, and, and, and again, talking with Baser, that was one of the, the things they said, make sure you do that during construction. So. I think this is an area of, of our curriculum that needs growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we recognize that. The room we're having is phenomenal. I mean, where they're going to be moving into. So we're just starting that. I, I hate to, to pass on it and then wish we had down the road, especially if we grow into it. Because right now, I mean, would you agree that it's it's an area that yeah, it's, it's, we need to keep Keep growing up. Keep growing. Um, yeah, if you could see our green room now, you'd understand that it, it needs to be an area that we grow in. Um, 
Are there a lot of students that take those courses right now? There's quite a few, yeah. A lot of interest in digital arts. Oh, that's big too. 20, almost 25 feet by on each side and 11. Yeah, the room is 20 foot square or so, 25 foot square. Yeah. So this is doing it the Two west, full walls. west and north wall. But yeah, so these these little green pieces, so the, the walls are already built with sheetrock. Yes, curved. And then they cut, they anchor these into the wall and then they mud tape and fill them. But, so it's a flat, smooth surface, just like you would a piece of drywall. These are like fiberglass, three-dimensional blocks. Um, and then they paint it all green. Okay, so it's a little, it's more durable than just sheetrock because it's down at the foot level and stuff for... Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, the, those pieces at the floor and in between are, are like a fiberglass okay. type material. Huh. Yes, can. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the analogy I was given. So since it's only a hundred dollars, I'll just pay for it and we'll move on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the fun part. All right, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <He's out. laughs> leave that. Leave that part to me to to break that. Okay. So you purchase this product from the manufacturer. Um, their quote for material, which includes paint and all the faculty material um, is $9,300. Um, it then gets installed by your regular carpenter and drywall crews. Um, so we received a preliminary uh, quote from McCown Gordon, um, which includes the, the all the finishing, the painting, of all that material provided by others and blocking to install it of $18,500. So it's, um, it's approximately $30,000. Um, Do we have the equipment to go along with this green wall? Equipment in the room? Yeah. In terms of what? Because that equipment's not cheap. Yeah. So, are we going to upgrade equipment, and how, or are we going to have a nice wall and equipment? Or is it already included in the budget? You what? Or, or is that new equipment already included in the software right. budget? Do you know for us? I don't know. I know what I was going to do. We have to take a look at that. We've got all these computers in there, but as far as the green yeah, when we talked about when we talked with him about that room and, and what additional equipment and stuff he needed, he yeah. said he had everything he needed. Um, they are getting a new sound control, lighting control panel as part of the, the construction budget. But they don't have any of the cameras that would typically go along with it. Are they using like a computer or are they? Computers. They have cameras. cameras. Yeah, they do have cameras. He, he buys most of that out of his budget. And I mean, I, I couldn't quite hear you. I first. provide the computers. Cameras he usually purchases, but I can't remember any specific new equipment for he, it. He didn't request it. He, didn't request he, didn't request it. Didn't know. he said he had everything he needed. Yeah. Okay. He was asked that question, so and shot. All right. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so that's that's the cyclorama wall. Um, we did talk about, in terms of the install budget, um, to do that on a time and material not to exceed. Um, it, it definitely is a, um, a safe budget estimate, but they, the installers will honestly just, they don't do this every day, so they're probably being um, conservative in how long they think it will take. The really tricky part is the finishing of it. And getting it all smooth so um, you know that they they would do it on a time material hopefully come up um, less than their estimate but that is the estimate at this point <clears throat> okay so those are the two action items um, the East Room finish upgrades um, for 25000 and I guess I would request if, if you guys want to throw in whether or not the sinks 
get upgrade, get added to that or removed from the room, um, we can work that in. And then the other item would be the cyclorama wall um, for the uh, video production room. And I, I guess I would add on the, on the green room, if we don't do it tonight, we, it's not it's a mute point, it's done. I mean, because they, they have so to that, yeah, They're they, ready to paint that room. Yeah. yeah well, it looks like, because it looked like they were having to remove some drywall to accommodate it. So they have to cut, yeah, they have to cut a strip out of the drywall and install blocking yeah. at a specific dimension. Yeah. So is this a... You know, there when we were doing the design of the, you know, room. Mm -hmm. this, this was not considered. This, yeah, this was. A, it, it came up. Yeah, it came up later. Okay. As a, as a potential upgrade. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, I mean, other than cutting a strip of drywall out, all the other labor um, would, would have been the same. How long? So, Mark, yeah. how long have the other districts had those? Well, I think uh, they sort of finished theirs, Stephanie, you probably know, three years ago, maybe. Um, and Bonner was kind of the same time period, uh, about three years ago. I guess my concern is, like, what career paths? Do we, if we're going to pay this much for the wall, like, what, what are our career paths for students taking courses that would use this? I think uh, digital graphics. Um, you know, this, the same pathways that we have now that kids are interested in, this would allow us to take them in their explorations a step further, maybe three steps further. So we've got a lot of kids that are interested in doing that after high school. And this this would give them a leg up in their preparation. So then, nobody knows what technology is going to do or how things are going to change, but could something change with this where it becomes obsolete or? not usable? I, I, I don't know for sure, but I can't imagine. I think this has been used for a long time. Okay. I, I think it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity for our kids. And um, while we know we need to grow in that area with resources, we need to make decisions, in my opinion, based on where we want to be, not where we are. I 100% well, agree with that. I just want to make sure that we're not going to place a wall like this and then not move forward mm -hmm. with that. That there is a plan to develop more courses or enhance what we currently have if we're going to, if students are going to have the opportunity for that. I, I would absolutely like to do that. Yeah. yeah. I have well, a question. Oh, go ahead. Well, my, my thing right now is like, I'm willing to approve additional money, but it's always based upon the benefit. So I, I just wish there was more of a definition about, here is an example of things we can't do now. Here is an example of things we will be able to do with this, and here is why that's valuable, you know? Because it feels ambiguous right now. It's like, oh, we'll be able to do more amazing. Well, what does that actually mean, And you know, as far as, production or is there things that they can't do now that they could be able to do or is there things that they could just do better I that's 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 where so from my knowledge of okay go ahead. through being a TV anchor at one point uh, <laughs> yeah. the it is like a green wall you are talking about waste up you're typically not going clear to the floor so this would allow them to do like a full body shot because the green is extending clear down to the floor yeah so if they made a movie with them like running away from a monster or whatever it might be, they can actually see their feet running before you would just have like a waist up shot. So that's what it's gonna actually, it'd be, it'll give them the ability to go from like ceiling clear onto the floor rather than <coughs> ceiling to floor with not being able to see feet. Okay. And that's important. Cool stuff. Well, okay. When you say that, I can see where it would be applied to other areas. So if you're making a promotional video, for any any class, right? Or if you're like you, trying to show somebody right. how to play basketball or whatever you might need to okay, be able to extend yeah, it. Now you're starting to, yeah. As so, far as understanding, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. And we're pretty sure that, that there's not a $10,000 camera that goes with, the, with this that we don't know about yet. 
I'm, I'm certain. Um, we have had those conversations with our video productions teacher, and, and he he tells us that he has what he needs. Okay. And any upgrades would come through our yearly budget to be budget for that. So, no, there, there's not a, a, a bank breaker that uh, would be a piece of equipment that we need to purchase. Okay. That, that helped that help me picture like something you couldn't do before. Yeah, that's like, cool. yeah. I have a question. So remember we were talking about the scoreboard, like putting a video scoreboard in the gym and I at one point the discussion was that that is not only a scoreboard, it also would be an educational tool for people. Same thing, like same pathway that it's an educational tool for kids to be a part of the programming of that and all of that. So so then the question in my mind is, so $30,000 here, or do you apply $30,000 to that scoreboard? Because I don't remember what the price of the scoreboard is, but I know that it was a big so price tag. Or 150000 150000 yeah. yeah. So then, so really you're saying... the scoreboard? No, I thought it was 90000 Okay. Why? Well, I was... That it's, was it's pre COVID money. Yeah. Yeah, that's pre COVID <laughs> money. So the prices have changed a little bit. Okay, well, let's Put say. the weapons there for it. Let's yeah. say it's 80 then. So if it's 80, then you say, okay, well, that scoreboard is, I mean, if it's the same pathway and the same, I, I don't know. Like, what, so what is more important? Because that scoreboard can be used for multiple things plus programming from that pathway, or this is used for that pathway. So, if you had to choose, or, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, I that's just the. Them, I think one of them, the, the green screen could support the video board. So a lot of the things that we would put up there for graphics, or maybe it's uh, player introductions, uh, roster introduction, you know, whatever, wow. graduation, could be done in the green room, and then they're displayed up there. So I, I would say, you know, one lens to the other. Okay. You can't, what, they're not, ex like, if you had to choose one over the other, well, you tough. wouldn't. <laughs> what? That's a tough question. <laughs> Mark wants the jumbotron. Well, so do I. That's why I'm saying, are you willing to give up your chance at a jumbotron for this, or are they? Is this worth investing in and having a? I, I think the jumbo. I don't even like saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, again, this, <laughs> She's just back. this lends to the, to the video board in the chat, and, and it would need to start with this. I would agree. I think you start with the green room. We need to, we need to grow that program. Yeah. And we can videotape things. Yeah. How many students would we touch yeah. with this? Who would what? How many VHS students recorders? do we touch with this? Oh, I'd have to look at enrollment numbers, um, but there's there's a, a large handful, and I think that with these facilities, we're going to have much increased interest. Are we talking thirty kids? More than that, I'd say. All right. I didn't believe it. Okay. <laughs> If there aren't any more questions, that is all I had to present this evening. Okay, thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I do have another question. Go ahead. Sorry, I had a question. I'm sorry. It's completely. It, it's not on that subject, no. but okay. So I was this weekend. I spent time with a friend that is a lawyer for the University of Missouri and in our discussions she was talking about how the university has been focusing on um, their signage and their just all of the accommodations that they have for ABA so she was talking about how they have changed their signage so the their signage is in motion so they're like um, so the like the drawing on it is a the person in motion with the little, I mean the the ADA yeah piece. for ADA the person's in motion and then for 
anything that they, like let's say they're talking about a basketball stadium, which is why I'm talking about this right now, because I don't know if it's too late to even look at this or not, but if it's not too late, I would vote that we have somebody take some time to look at this, but what she's saying is that a lot of times when, when these designs come out, the spots, the, the areas that they have to go and um, sit and watch a basketball game are not really, um, what's the word? Like they're not, you're not allowed to then sit, you know, in the student section next to your friends. You're on the front row or, or you're on the top row. Like it's whatever, like that's how the typical design is. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing at the university is, is restructuring things so that um, so that if you want to be you know sitting in the middle of the student section you have the opportunity to do that so um, I just had never even thought about that and I thought it was a really interesting thing an important thing to look at and because we haven't started the building of the of the gym space I just think if it's possible, maybe we can just look at that and see what the options are and, you know, just have somebody do some research on that. Yeah, I'm curious how they're doing that. Well, um, I can give you, I can text assess. or email. So I, I do know the bleachers have already been released. Um, pretty much everything in that building has been released and procured. The lockers are made, the um, precast is made and all that. Um, and so, the, yeah, the current design has you know, the ADA seats um, at the base of the bleachers. I can't remember where. I think there's eight of them. Yeah, I think they're they're fairly centrally located, um, but they're, they're but there's not a, there's not a platform or anything up in the, yeah, the middle of the bleachers. For them to well, go. maybe at the very yeah. least, if you wouldn't mind, whoever the appropriate person is, maybe I if I gave you the number of the person at the university who's in charge of this, because it's not her. She's a lawyer for the university, but it's not her, but she it's her coworker that's like in charge of this. And because the like they've been working on this, maybe somebody could just have a conversation with them and then look at the like look at our plan and see if there's anywhere that we can improve in that. Would that be reasonable to ask? Yeah, I'm sure Harvard yeah. Bleachers is probably yeah, has, yeah knows, has been knows something. Before. But yeah, I, I if you want to share that with Lauren and you can share mm -hmm. it with me yeah. and we can Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's worth investigating and yeah. seeing where we can improve. Yeah. Okay. I'd be glad to look into it. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. With that, Forrest is up for the technology update. I'm going to speak first a little bit to my technology hardware. Um, this year, um, we did issue new Chromebooks for students at um, first, fifth, and ninth grade again. And we did go with the Dell 3100s like I brought in and, and showed you earlier in the year. We didn't have any delays. I got them ordered very early last year, so we had them in actually by the beginning of the summer. So we had students ready to go. Um, I plan on ordering again early and probably around in February to make sure that I've got them in by summer. Um, I plan on going with the Dell 3100s again um, because we've been very happy for the price point and um, the durability and just the whole device has been great for us so far. Um, now, new laptops for teachers. We didn't get them quite as soon. We got them in, received them in early October, and we're prepping them right now to get them distributed to teachers. Are you going to wait to distribute those after we move, or? No, I'm probably going to. I'll probably start distributing them at least at the middle school and elementary school okay. before that. Gotcha. That's what I planned on anyway. Um, Network equipment is all in. Aaron will be very happy about a couple things I'm going to say here in a minute. Um, I, re I received the final piece of some networking equipment I was waiting it on. So I've got all my stuff in. I actually spent, plan on spending the bulk of my day tomorrow over at the new building um, connecting the, the 
switches and getting my fiber. And I plan to hopefully within the next two weeks have the, the whole network up and live over there. So when they move in December, they'll just be able to go in. I mean, Wi-Fi will be already up and working. Plug in your phone or your computer and it'll come right up and you'll be ready to go. Um, still, I'm having some supply issues. I just need, have been very, tried to be very good about ordering my stuff um, far in advance. But some things that I'm still running into issues with supplies are um, mon monitors for one thing. I, I've ordered some monitors and I just got a notification that they're going to ship in July, <laughs> beginning of August, is the delivery date. Um, and UPS, is, they're not quite as long. I've ordered um, new UPSs for the new high school. I ordered them a little while back, but um, they've been delayed and, and they'll come in around, um, around February. So when they get in, um, I mean, it's nothing that'll keep us from going live in the new building. And, and when the UPSs, the battery backups come in, I'll get them installed. Um, I had spoken before about we moved from Sprint's 1 million project to T-Mobile's called 10 million project now. Um, it's great. We didn't get the hotspots in. I mean, they were a little delayed coming in, but we got them in around near the end of summer. Um, <clears throat> we're doing it a little differently this year, and I've, I've been real happy with the move, this move to T-Mobile. Um, they're better about um, if we find that we need more hotspots, all I do is have to put in a request and they'll send us all the hotspots we want. Um, Sprint was a little different. I can only do that once a year. Uh, but Team Mobile is a, is a lot more flexible about that. Um, the way we're distributing them though now is a little bit differently. We're kind of letting each of the buildings, we're starting with the middle school and high school, we're, we've distributed um, all the hotspots, which, by the way, I mean, this is completely uh, free to our families and our students. We set them up to be distributed through the library. So I've given an allotment to the middle school library, the high school library. The buildings are, gonna, are promoting it. Students come in, they come into the library. We kind of did it this way because um, the librarians have just scanned them into their fall inventory systems and they just check them out just like they would a book. You know, a student can come in and check one out for the night, you know, the weekend, um, all year if they want. We just check back with them, within, in with them periodically to make sure the device is working for them. I haven't heard anything yet whether T-Mobile is better, but you know, once we get outside of city limits, we still do have um, some connection issues. Uh, I think I spoke about, I know I did, and last time I did, did an update, I spoke about Go Guardian Filter. We were kind of demoing, demoing it at the end of last year. Over the summertime, we switched over to it completely, so we're no longer using securely. Uh, I'm, it's fantastic. Um, it, you know, our teachers already use Go Guardian Teacher to control what's going on in our classrooms. Go Guardian, Go Guardian, Go Guardian, sorry, Filter gives us even more control to, you know, we, hit, we try to head off issues before it even makes it to the classroom. Uh, Go Guardian gives me a list of the top visited websites over, you know, what, a day, a week, five days, whatever I set in the filter. Um, and when we first switched over to Go Guardian, the 50 top sites every day was kind of littered with gaming sites that kids have found and were able to get to. If you go in and look at our top 50 sites every day now, it's like, um, it's great. All 50 of them will be all educational content uh, being provided. Very few game sites pop up, but when they do, we, uh, we add them to our block list. It's got features like um, smart alerts. Um, you know, it, it lets us know. We go, <clears throat> we've gotten really good, I think, as an IT department at um, keeping a better eye on the filter. You know, we're in the filter, all of us, all my guys are trained on it. We're in there multiple times a day checking smart alerts because we get flagged alerts if somebody's searching for hacking or you know wants to know an IP address or something like that, and then we can investigate it. We usually um, send those kind of alerts also off to the principals and counselors to investigate. Um, Go Guardian offers um, a solution called Beacon, um, which is kind of 
like a self-harm that we had was securely. And those notifications go out to counselors and then they investigate them and they make notes and, and Beacon always, I mean, keeps all the information. Uh, and then they close the Beacon case out when they've resolved it. So we've been very happy with GoGuardian. Um, something we introduced also is GoGuardian Parent. And we started with signups this year at the middle school. GoGuardian Parent just gives the parent, if they want to, they sign up for it. Just gives, you know, it's an app on your phone. You can kind of check, see what your student's doing on the internet. You can even impose restrictions when they get home if you want it to be a little stricter. Like maybe you don't want, watch, want them watching YouTube all night. You know, you can block that. You can even set time uh, restrictions, like they can only be on it for two hours and then it, then it shuts off. Or the internet shuts off. So we started at the middle school and at next conferences um, around the Christmas time, we'll be adding the high school to that also. So what parents do is the, when they go into their conference, there's, we have some informa we have an informational sheet in there and they, you, know, you can just scan a barcode and it'll take you right to the app and you can download the app and put it on your phone and then we add you to the system and you get some information in the mail on how to use it. So it's pretty slick. Midco, and this is something very new for Midco. They came up with the idea at the end of last year, and I, I've been put, pestering our rep about it. We're actually one of the first school districts or businesses that are using it. They've added DDoS protection now to their internet connection. And we're still, I mean, they're still fine tuning it a little bit, but um, so far it's been great. That's like a denial of service attack. Yeah. It heads it off. I mean, if it senses a denial of service, um, it'll initiate some mitigation things that it's got. Um, right now, I'm trying to work with them because sometimes the system thinks it's an attack, but it's not really an attack. So we still got a little fine tuning to do. But even with um, it thinking, I mean, we haven't any had, you know, we haven't had inter interruption in service. Yes. So something else we also have added, which I'm excited about, in the new high school in the central office, we've actually added a second internet connection for the district. Um, this internet connection will feed mainly the high school and the new board office traffic to the internet, but it also gives us a redundant internet connection. So if Midco, our line is having an issue, we'll be able to switch over to our second internet connection and not have any downtime, which I'm excited about. Camera, it's a completely, I wanted to go with a completely different provider. AT&T put in the fiber. It's not Midco fiber, it's AT&T's fiber. Canren is the provider of our service out of Lawrence and just built into their subscription is um, DDoS protection also. I just, I just think, uh, you know, two internet connections, DDoS protection, you know, we're just kind of, you know, I mean, we've, looking we've, to we've the experienced future. both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these two things, I think, will just head off a lot of issues. Um, so EdTech usage survey is something, Gary, um, Mr. Richmond, our technology integration person, um, we kind of did this for the first time last, at the end of last school year, because we wanted to know, you know what teachers were using, we wanted to know what they thought they needed more training on, um, you know, when was a good time for training, it really helps Gary, you know, guide how he's going to get information out to people. But something else we always ask is, you know, what's out there that you guys like and use, um, and that we need to take a look at. I mean, I will say over the last three years, I need to bring my spreadsheet in all on our purchasing because on the last three years, I mean, we've covered a lot of bases and programs that the district needs, I think. You know, do we have a video editing program now? Yeah, we do. Do we have a PDF editing program? Yes. Do we have something where you can do screencasting? Yes, we've added all those kind of things. And we did add, um, Gary and I kind of vetted some of the suggestions that the teachers had, and we did add um, three new programs over this last year that we got a large amount of teachers asking for. 
Um, Ed Puzzle is one that we had, we've added. Gim, a program called Gim Kit that's used a lot by middle school teachers. eSpark is a program that we added. We have a complementary program that we've had for years called Study Island that runs in grades three through five. And that program, I mean, we can put map data into Study Island, you know, and then it kind of generates a, what the students need to be working on to improve their map scores. Um, eSpark is kind of a counterpart to that, and it works with grades K2. Um, Teachers really wanted eSpark. It was either eSpark or Freckle. When we looked at both of them, they do basically the same thing. Um, but eSpark, we liked a little bit better, and um, the cost was a third of the cost of Freckle. Um, we also expanded our Happy Numbers subscription to add um, first grade. The subscription had been in kindergarten and second grade. Not quite sure why first grade was overlooked, but we've added first grade into that now. So upcoming projects that we've got. So the big one is getting the high school network set up and ready for everybody. That's going to be my big the next month, making sure everything's ready to go for, for them. And then getting all of our equipment moved over there. And then we've got to go back to the old building and get our old, our old equipment, like old projectors, switches, and stuff that we still want to keep. We've got to get them out of the building before they start tearing it down. All right, so this next one, and Lauren and I have kind of talked about this in the past before, and it just wasn't a good time until this upcoming year. Um, SOX, our website provider, is something we, we are ending this year, a multi-year contract that, that the district had signed, and this is our last year. So this is the perfect time of re, kind of reevaluating our website provider. So, I, I'm not sure, I wasn't here when they picked socks before or what process they went through to decide on a website um, provider to use, a vendor. Um, but what I'd kind of like to do is be able to send out a parent and staff survey on, you know, what's needed in a website. What, what, what do parents want to see in a website? What do parents <coughs> want to see in a website? And then, my suggestion would be, I'd also like to establish a, a panel of just individuals in the district. I mean, I'd like to have you know, some teachers, um, parents, maybe even students, um, board members, if you guys are interested, um, and just kind of review and evaluate some different vendors. And then maybe we could come to a conclusion of a, of a good website vendor for the district. I mean, I've looked at some other ones out there like Blackboard, and I, I really like Blackboard. I, I just think some of the stuff about our website are a little outdated looking, and I think we can improve upon that. Would that, would that include, does that effort include, uh, you know, just looking at, are there ways to optimize how quickly you could find and access information, you know, and so it, it's not just the event of taking the website and moving it to a new uh, vendor, but it's also just reworking. How we manage it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right now, um, we have, you know, at least six or seven people that have access to the website <coughs> that update different parts of the website. I kind of think we probably need to slim that down where we're only using maybe one or two people that kind of, so, so the site would be a little more cohesive. Yeah. Um, and the last thing that we've got coming up, and this is kind of being brought on by our um, I mean, it's a it's a good security measure also, but, but we're going to be um, implementing two-factor authentication across the district. I'm still not quite sure what it's going to look like, but I have an idea, and I've got a little time to work on it. But this is something that our insurance company also brought up also because of our cyber insurance policy that they're requesting us to implement um, two-factor authentication. But, I mean, besides that, it's, it's still a good security measure to implement. You guys have any questions for me? What, what's your timeline for the website? What are you thinking with regards to, like? Well, we've got plenty of time. With the website, I'd like to be able to spend um, the second half of the year kind of evaluating the different vendors and, and, you know, drawing it all up. And then I'd like to make the switch over. I'm, I'm a big, you know, summertime person. Yeah. You know, the summertime's a great time to switch over stuff like that. Okay. 
So that, that would kind of be my timeline. That we'll be done this summer, but the following summer. This coming summer. 2022? Yep. That would be my, my timeline I didn't know to you make did. the switch okay. this coming summer. And that way when the new school year starts, you know, we've already been using mm -hmm. it and had it up for a month or so, or a month or two. That's awesome. That's that's what I would shoot. That was faster than I thought you were. Yeah, that's that's what I would like to do. I mean, our subscription will run out next November. I don't think we need to run all the way to next November with the current website. I think that just gives us time to keep a website up, but investigate a new one and get it implemented correctly. Did you put uh, Kaya's name on that? Yeah, list? I was saying Kaya. <laughs> I did, she's at the top of my list. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I like opinions. Very good. Do you guys have any other questions? That's great. I do. Okay. So on Go Guardian, yes. why did you choose to do it at conference time to to introduce the parents to that option? Um. It, see, Gary and I kind of came up with that. We were just trying to figure out a good way to get out, get the information out there about that we were using it, um, or that we had had it. Right. Um, we just thought conference time. I, it would be. I don't know, we just thought it'd be a great, you know, the, the people are here because we need to collect some information from them also. Oh, uh, you you can't, it's nothing, it's not something that you can set up and they can download, like you can't email that code out so that they can do it at home. Um, yeah, I could as long as they can get back the information to me that I need because I have to put them in the system. Um, and we thought, you know, one other thing that we had thought of, you know, we want to make sure when a person's requesting access to a student's internet traffic that, you know, they're actually, a, you know, a relative of the... They're, they're who they say they're, they are. Yeah, they're a family member, and we just thought with conferences, they're right there. That, that, that would be the easiest way, and then, you know, doing it through an email or something like that, and then we would have to go in and, and verify that. Mm, yeah. We just thought conference time might be an easier... That's fair. Yeah. I've to handle it's just that stuff. I don't know what the percentage of people that actually go to conferences. So yeah, I went to the middle school and I didn't see it, but Hayden was just wanting to get in there, do his thing, and then get out, and he didn't want to. So we didn't really look around. But I didn't see it at the middle school. All the teachers were supposed to have had them, and we're supposed to introduce them to you. Yeah, I didn't. Was there a lot of interest? A lot of people signed up. Um, not really. Yeah, they never. We had, we had a few. Um, Maybe you need to reintroduce that. Well, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I'm open to. I'll sit down with Gary and see if we can figure out some. I mean, yeah, they didn't more ways to get it out there. I don't know if we wanted to do it. I mean, we, at the beginning of the year, enrollment would be a good time. That's all virtual, right? Mostly. Yes. Well, <laughs> what you could do is just do an email introduction with, "Here's what it is, and here's who you, you know, it's, you know, for." These reasons, or it'll be, you know, advertise it before a conference that says, "Hey, this will be available. Go to this location to sign up." Or, I mean, you know, we could even have them. We could send out even something now, and they can just stop by the office yeah. and do it right there in the office and have it sign up. And then we also know who's asking for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I mean, even if they're not going to utilize it, I think that. Everyone knowing that it's something that exists in the district is a benefit because it because it's a pretty cool benefit if that's something that you want to utilize. So well, we can we'll work on it being we'll do a better we'll see if we can do a better job of advertising it for when high school conferences come around because I know a lot of times you don't you may not get as many parents coming to yeah. high school conferences as middle school or elementary. So maybe we can throw that out there so that they know it's there. Um, and they can just come to the office if they are not going to conferences, I guess, and sign up for it. High school conferences virtual. Some. We had a mix this time. Yeah. Like, okay. We didn't have an in-person option. Yeah. We they were didn't. all virtual. You could request a... No, that was just communicated. Oh, for this year? Yeah. Okay, well then maybe we should just set it up at the high school that they have to come into the office or something. But... Um, yeah. Or we could do it. We could do it. Yeah. Even maybe. Okay. All right. I'll work on that. You guys have anything else? No. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thank, Thank you. With that, that brings us to item two the consent agenda. Any discussion or topic? Any 
Questions or anything about that? If not, I'd entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I second it. In favor, raise your hand. Motion carried. Which brings us to item three, public comment, patron comments. And we have a uh, Joe Bogart. Yes. The floor is yours. Anyway, my name is Joe Bogart, and um, I like this better. Um, I actually attended the <laughs> school board uh, meeting a couple of months ago, and I didn't like it when it was in front and people had their backs to the public and things like that. So I, I really like this, and thank you for uh, taking my, your time to listen to what I have to say. Um, one, I, I, it frustrated me the last meeting that I was at, the big topic was masks, and people had their opportunity to speak, like I am, but nothing was ever discussed afterward. It just, people, you guys just moved on to the next thing, and it feels like, eh, no, oh, well, whatever they say, they say, and nothing was ever really talked about with it. I also had questions, and I have been really quiet throughout this meeting, I had lots of questions, but I was offered the opportunity to email rather because I know this isn't the forum for that, but what is? So when I did email, the only person, you were the only person that answered me back. So we don't know what you guys think about public, you know, concerns and things like that. And I just wanted to, to just bring out that I really appreciate the time that you guys take to be on the school board but you don't care about our kids more than we do. And I am concerned about the mask mandate because I, I have a grandson that was recently exposed to someone that was positive. He wears a mask to school, so he was given the opportunity to either be swapped daily for two weeks or do virtual school. If you have confidence in your mask, why are you having a child swapped daily? And I'm a nurse, and I can tell you that your cloth masks don't keep anybody from getting sick. But at the same time, if you're out in the public and you're not wearing a mask, and you're in your home and you're not wearing a mask, there's nothing to keep you from getting sick from someone who's sick. And you may not even know that they are. So I, I think that you should think about what how frustrating it is for some of these kids are in athletics. They're not wearing masks while they're playing games and things like that. And so how are we really keeping them safe? And how are we really keeping them from, you know, being, feeling constantly like they're worried about, I don't think any of you guys would want to be swabbed every day. And it's, it, I don't think that it's really helping. So that would I'd be concerned. I would really like an opportunity for the public to be able to ask questions and get their questions answered, whether it's on the website, if they could, you know, pose a question and have one of you guys answer it, or, you know, have, instead of just an individual email, because we're all kind of concerned about the same thing, and we, we should be able to share knowledge or ask questions. And, and maybe come up with help help the school board to come up and the teachers. I've seen some really amazing things here today, and I don't think the public knows all this stuff necessarily. It'd be a great place on your website to really focus on those kinds of things and ask the public to participate. And how can we get money for programs for kids? How can we do fundraisers and things like that? So let us participate. And that's, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Go ahead. Well, okay. So one of the things, I mean, just to address one of the things, we have talked about this before, and I don't think we've solved it, but we have talked about the fact that sometimes when people talk, that we should, like, you know, I know that all everyone here appreciates when people come and share. 
and we appreciate the effort and the, you know, it's nerve wracking and you have to prepare and all of that. And so we appreciate the time and the effort. Um, and um, so we have talked about how sometimes, you know, because sometimes people also get up and say false things and then there should be some way that then we can address that and clarify, well, that's not actually right. happening because otherwise people hear it on the video or in the room and then they leave and they don't know that it's false, but we know it's false. So like for example, the nurses will only swab children when they have permission and the parents have requested. So that's, you know, that's one thing that I heard that I just feel like everyone should be clarified that that's that. But I think that we all recognize that maybe, um, that maybe the communication can be approved upon. I don't think we have the perfect solution to that. We all are volunteers and everyone has, you know, like a life, like everybody's so busy yeah. these days. So like I am guilty about not responding to every single email either because a lot of times when as a board member when you get emails it comes in like you get like 5,000 one day and then you won't get them for five months you know so so then you try your best but also like you know we're not perfect so anyway I just think I feel confident in speaking for everybody and they can speak up if this is wrong we do appreciate public participation in the board meetings. We do appreciate communication. And I know we're not perfect at communicating back, but I can, I think that, I feel confident telling you that we all want, like that is something that we've talked about and we want to get better at. And so. Well, thank you for, for that because I really appreciate that feedback. And, it, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's what it's like, it's just a little bit of, we hear you and we'll consider it if it's a hot enough topic maybe there should be a special meeting i know you guys have done that plenty of times and uh and, and just so that we kind of know that you, that we're heard because and i know i know exactly what you're saying you know well but, in, in some just, in some circumstances you're trying to manage the environment in the room especially if it's heated so you get in a situation to where it's it's uh, elevated uh, tension, I guess, is fate. And, and what you don't want to do is get into a situation to where it's a response, and then it's just you lose control of the environment, and it's just a whole bunch of yelling, which is not productive either. So I think one, you know, when we had that happen last time, I, right now it's like you have a little bit more flexibility because you know it's just not, te you know, the the, the tensions aren't you know, at a 10 on the scale. So you get that. Uh, and when we've had folks on, you know, other topics and stuff like that, we have, we'll have a little bit more dialogue after that. But that, that meeting was just a, you know, yeah. it was uh, heated. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, it just was bothersome to me that nothing was said about, it was like, okay, the papers all talked and that was it. And I would just really like the feedback because I, you do want to get through what may be false information or yeah. information that's out there that's not helpful and uh, and try to find the common ground for, between parents and, and school. I mean, it's, it's a big trust relationship that we have with one another because you send your kids to school and you, you hope that, and in most cases, the teachers are amazing, and they, uh, they, the kids have great relationships with, with each other as well. And so that's what you hope for. And but you still have to be aware of what's happening at school. And I think the best, one of the best ways to do that is to go to school. And one of my favorite things as a parent was to have lunch with my kids or uh, go to school and read to the kids and participate and they love it, that the teachers love it, and then you also get to see how wonderful the teachers are and you know how how great the programs are that they're doing. And I think that's the, that open doorness is so important to the education of our kids. Oh, so I, I do really I do really appreciate. So what Forrest just talked about with the website mm -hmm. um, 
I, I mean, I think that that is gigantic for the district because the website's a communication tool that you can go to and other districts that I've looked at, they have a website that's very easy to navigate and they have, you know, question like a FAQ and questions and answers. So even if you don't agree with the answer, you know how the district, like what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then it, you know, it kind of gives you a, okay, that's fine. So I think when Forrest, I mean, that project that he's going to take on and, you know. And, and you volunteered for. Yeah. <laughs> and I will happily volunteer about it because I have a, a huge, like, I just think a lot of these communication issues, you know, if you have an easy way to go and just look and just have a general, I mean, just, yes. there's just little, I, I don't know, I won't expand, but Forrest is leading a project that will be so important to solving this no problem. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, but, but could you get on that? <laughs> so anyway. Well, I'm bringing, 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 bringing. I mean, for sure, I, I actually transitioned out of my nursing role three years ago into uh, an informatics role, and so I helped develop the, uh, doc, the electronic documentation at my hospital. And so that is the way, the way to go. People want portals so that they can see all their own healthcare information. And so there's lots of interaction there, and I think that's, that is the way to do it. And also to have it to have it. Authentication is everywhere, and it has to happen. It's just so easy. So, do we are we uh, do we want to continue that on the general discussion later? Because if you want to stick around, there might probably be some additional discussion potentially. I don't know. I do have a quick question that you brought up, maybe that do we have adult mentors that can serve the elementary, middle school, or high school? A what? A, adult mentor program. Do we have that in our schools? Well, you like volunteers or? Well, mentors that are certified, so they have to go through a background check. They have to go through everything, so they can. No, we had looked into like youth friends and Big Brothers Big Sisters before. Well, Facer has a Care Cat, and it's a national program. They have the mentors and care they call them Care Cats, but they actually have to go through a background check, and they do. They have to go through a training, and then they are then certified to be able to go to a classroom and read a book or work one-on-one -on -one with students or work in small groups with students. I think as we go forward and maybe less transparency and, or sorry, less, more transparency and allowing more people to um, maybe help out in the school would be to have some kind of program like that. It's good stuff. With that moving forward, um, Let's have item 4.1, um, the superintendent month, um, update. Okay. I, I handed out three of them, so if you have them there. The first one is uh, our move plans for December and January. We've gone over this, uh, been refining this as we move forward. Um, probably the biggest change uh, taking place is that we contacted a local auctioneer for help with a lot of uh, cafeteria equipment that has some value and we're talking stoves, refrigerators, stainless steel type things that you just don't want to throw away. I mean there's there is some value there and so um, Barb Smith has done a wonderful job of, of identifying all the different um, pieces of material that, that, um, that could be sold online. So we're looking at that Saturday, December 18th in the morning as an online auction um, and then also probably an on-site in at the same time. So these two people would work together in, uh, in developing that for us. So you're going to be seeing uh, some of this information coming out. They like to use about a month's worth of, of uh, what do you call it, not broadcasting it, but putting it out for the public to view. So you'll be able to see a mixer or a stove or a refrigerator that's up for sale uh, online. So they'll take care of that. Of course, there's a commission involved, but I think the important thing here is that we're giving some people some opportunity to, to purchase some things that, that they may want, that we're not gonna be able to use in our new facility. So 
that's that. And then um, we had to rearrange the move. Uh, we coordinated with the town warden. And now on that Thursday, December 23rd, in the morning, uh, we're taking the advice of the committee we put together. Uh, we're we're going to have those uh, nonprofit groups who could be churches, 4-H, fairgrounds, whatever, nonprofit groups, the ability to come in and, and pick some things up that could help them. Um, who knows what they all need. Uh, but that could include bookshelves or desks or maybe spoons and forks and, you know, all, all sorts of small items. Um, and that'll be in the morning <coughs> in the afternoon. We're opening it up to the general public and it's come and get it. And there's, we don't even know what's going to be left uh, in there, but I, I would anticipate probably some bookshelves, um, things that from the classroom, um, but it's, it's, it's going to be a giveaway from one probably until five or five thirty. It's got to be removed. We can't just tag, tag it and hope to come back later because the abatement uh, in those areas start the following week after Christmas, uh, that Monday and Tuesday after Christmas. So there's, there's a very short turnaround time, but we'll start uh, advertising that. Uh, we'll, we're, uh, we, our office is gonna start collecting names of organizations that want that opportunity in the morning to come in. So if it's a 4-H group or a fairgrounds group, church, let us know, and we'll, we'll start advertising that and start getting more aggressive with that. Um, probably put a story in the Vindicator and then on our website. So we'll start pushing pretty hard. Any questions about that? Um, Aaron, am I missing anything? Because, I mean, we just, ha we just had to change our whole schedule yeah. to meet the abatement um, schedule is really what it came down to. And there's going to be some items from West Campus, too, involved in that because <laughs> there's going to be some desks, perhaps. I mean, some, some fairly nice things that we're, that we're not reusing in the other areas of the, of the um, school district. So anyway, that's that. We'll, we'll keep working on it. I'll keep you guys updated. And then I also, I, I will develop a much better <laughs> rules to follow. I mean, I think that's really important to me. Like when people come, they know what, what, what's the rules for the game, you know, and so that we don't have issues at that day. So maybe asking some board members to come in and help. So just kind of putting that out there. We could use some help just with meeting people at the door, explaining the process, and we'll probably have some staff members in too. Master plan, talk to Amber Beverly, and she's going to come on the December 13th and present. That'll be one of the presentations we have at that day. The East Gym uh, TPAC HVAC bid and recommendation, Aaron's been working on that. And Aaron, you might just give a quick update where, you, where we're at, but I know the plan is for December 13th for that to be presented. Any, anything else? Uh, our placement issue, um, responsible to on the Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Friday the 23rd, I think. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, we'll get those, those responses. Then, um, going out to um, at least three groups. We might uh, have a fourth one to throw in there. Um, and then we'll evaluate those responses and bring a recommendation to the December board meeting. Okay. All right. The MOU, uh, we, we're working on that. I've met with the uh, rec commission a couple of times, or rec, I mean, talking to Brad Eccles and, and Galen a couple of times. We feel probably our best move forward is to involve uh, some lawyers with the, the helping us create that narrative, the formal uh, MOU document. Um, we know what we want to put in the document. I mean, we have the background. We just need to do it right, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's. And I think um, we're, we're talking um, a, a year away yet before they will actually start that lease. So, we, I mean, we have some time, but it's high on our priority list. So been good and uh, appreciate the cooperation with the Red Commission. Uh, CTE and VOAG classroom, this is another thing that Aaron has been highly involved with. We brought Scott Rice in. One of our hopes is that we can do some, some um, renovation in, in those classrooms uh, for, 
for the VOAG program. They, if you, I mean, I would really encourage probably the board to come in and just take a look at what they have. If you haven't been in there, it's the most mismatched equipment that you can imagine. I mean, they kind of, anything free, they have grab. And so broken, I mean, it's just, it's not good. The floors are ruined. Uh, we need to get that taken care of. Uh, sagging ceilings, dimly lit. I mean, it, it could- I have a picture. Yeah. <laughs> It, it could just use a real touch up. And I think, you know, it's been brought to my attention that at some points the CTE program wasn't integrated into some of the, the budget plans. And maybe we're in a position to do that and really upgrade those classroom facilities. Um, we've done a lot with the HVAC, we've done a lot with some of the equipment in the classrooms. So we're going to be talking about that a lot more. Can I ask a quick mm -hmm. question? So you had said we have good stuff to get rid of, like desks and stuff, mm -hmm. but then, so the Iowa showed me a picture of the Boag room, mm -hmm. which I've, I have seen before, but why wouldn't we move some of that well, good will. stuff over to Oh, they, they have that first opportunity. Okay. Yeah. No, anything that's going to be reused, we wouldn't get rid of something that Right, but I'm just saying maybe they, that's the yeah, they should be the first group to, oh, yeah, to absolutely. check that out. Yeah, that's a good, I mean, I, I should have said that, but yeah, the teachers are going to have that opportunity. Now, the other thing we could be looking at is possibly some new furniture, too, in those classrooms, uh, more multi-purpose, something that matches what's going on in the high school. Um, I know one of the things we talked a lot about was just some plumbing issues for some of the labs that they have. They were talking about, you know, the, the pigs, and, I mean, we, they're using buckets right now. Nothing, in, buckets in a plastic table. And so it's not cohesive. It's not what we want. But no, we would. I feel like I'm. <laughs> yeah. I said they're farm kids. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what I was saying. No, they get, get, get it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So where is this classroom? Those classrooms? So right behind the labs, there's four of them stacked in a row, right behind like where the welding is. The welding. They're all right. Come out the van door, that far van door, and you go down to that. But it was right behind the old church. There was like a... Mm -hmm. There's a whole row. That stuck out. So why is that not part... Like, I don't even... Like, that's it, where... I don't understand. It was originally not part of the renovation. Why? Big budget. Big but budget. why... But... So... Okay. So why are we renovating the room... Like, or why are we voting to renovate the rooms? Like, in the gymnasium, but that's not part of... Like, I want it to be. I want it to be. I, I, mean, I think, I'm not sure we're on the same. That should have been first, maybe, since it's an educational space. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, we just have a lot of work to well, do. Why was it not on the list? Like, was it, okay. <laughs> so was that, that's classroom space, mm -hmm. correct? And it's in the existing THS. It's not in the West Campus. It's no, it's THS. Main, in, yes. So, how is, like, did we vote not to address that? Like, we're retiling all the hallways and we doing did. all this stuff. I think, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's just. I remember. We voted it off. It was a discussion yeah. we had early on about not doing anything in the CTA yeah. rooms. It, and because of cost. Cost. It and was so all budget. What was the cost? Well, it was during those meetings. I remember that discussion being at the pre-meetings that we had um, about doing the CT or not doing so it. So why would we not? OK, so. It is on, it is on that enhancement list. It is? Yeah. Um, it's it's something that we've been working on getting costs together for. OK. Um, and that is just now getting finalized. Um, and it, it's part of what, part of this ongoing list of things that the district has been looking at for opportunities um, to be considered. Yeah. Um, but there's, we've had on the list for a while about the AD, and then there's kind of a to be determined line item on there for, um, for furniture renovations. And so those are the numbers we're trying to I think, I mean, we're going to bring, bring it in. Okay, so am I crazy that, like, so this is a classroom space, and this is, so if you're in any other classroom or any other pathway in our building, you have a brand new beautiful space, but if you're in this 
classroom or pathway, then you have a that's you walk into a classroom that looks like a garage sale. That's why I'm so, I mean, addressing it. But yeah, well, I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I let I'm, I'll change my tone. <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me start over. So I'm not mad. I'm no, just, I, know, I didn't get that. I, I, I'm just I'm just asking the question. Like to me. I just don't understand. Okay, so I guess my question then would be, um, so what other spaces? I had a horrible assumption thinking that everything was getting touched. Mm -hmm. So what are the spaces that are not getting touched? I would say this is the last almost. Well, the gym itself, the existing, You're right. the existing locker rooms, um, the, the tea pack. Wait, I'm writing a list. Okay, sorry. Okay, the gym. Gym. T pack. The existing locker rooms. The weight room. Um, Some areas in West Campus. Yeah. The, the home ec area. The, all the classrooms along the West Bank. West side of West Campus. Yeah, the, the home ec room. The, and there's several other little mm -hmm. ancillary rooms. Um, Going around the tea pack in my mind. Um, those rooms are getting just paint pouring around the tea pack, but nothing inside the tea pack itself. So it wasn't um, this, and then the shops, the, the shop areas. The CTE part of the building was built at the same time that the tea pack was renovated, mm -hmm. was my understanding. Well, right. I don't think that's happening. So they were about the same age. And so I think when they decided not to touch, what I understood was when we didn't touch TPAC, we're also not touching the CTE as part of that. But. Okay. but I also think it comes down to programming and passing a bond when we initially talked about this. Is that correct? I, I honestly I think some of the conversations Stephanie's talking about predate me. The, they, they were during the they community were, meeting. They were during the community meeting. Right, and that's what I remember. Mm -hmm. Our organization. Yeah. We were, there was just some limitations, where budgetary limitations, that we had to get everything to fit into the, right. that square box. And okay. when, when things came in better, it, it, it opened up some other avenues. Okay. Well, it's, I think it's very important that the CTE programs are given some consideration here. So then. Um, I know what the gym looks like. I know what TPAC looks like. The existing locker rooms, what the status of those, like they... Oh, they're nice. They're nice? Yeah. Okay, the weight room. But one of the best in the area. Uh, we, we thought about maybe painting it, but moving all the equipment out of the way to paint it would cost a fortune, so it, it's in pretty good shape. Okay, so on my list, so you have the gym, the TPAC, the existing locker, locker room, and the weight room. All of those areas look nice, mm -hmm. so that's not an area of concern. And the West Campus, if it's my, if I'm understanding right, that is space that would be used for um, like continuing education. Mm -hmm. Like those are programmings down. That's not something that we are using right. for our kids like day in day out. And then the shop area is like where they weld and right. all of that. So that... We've, made, we've made upgrades through painting and cleaning and HVAC already. Okay, so this, so these what? classrooms. In lighting, yeah, sorry. So these classrooms, like then are the only space existing left in either building that are classroom spaces that are not currently being covered that, it's, like. That's correct. So then, I guess, okay, I'm not mad. But I guess I'm a little frustrated when I go through all of this in the respect that, like, if I knew that, like, maybe I should have known that, so that's bad on me. But if I knew that, like, I wouldn't even consider paying $30,000 for that screen. Like, I want the screen. That mm -hmm. sounds amazing. I have a kid in that class. I see how excited he is about, you know, he comes in and shows me all the videos they do and they interview people and whatever. Like, I'm all for it. But if we vote thirty thousand dollars for that, but then this classroom we don't have money to touch, well, like that's ridiculous. We have the money. Okay, but I have to know that that classroom's getting like that classroom should look as nice as any other classroom, in my opinion. Before, like I should, like I need, like yes, that's going to happen. 
before I well, you know one of the things the timeline it doesn't match up I mean with the new construction and, and where we're at with the CTE building I mean we, we've got time to work on the CTE building the, the new addition I mean we're on a much different timeline I don't know if, I know that's not answering your question my, my goal is to get the classrooms fixed up right so can I, I mean I, I understand where you're where you're coming from and it it really goes back to you know what we've been talking about for several months now creating this list of you know there's there's different different priority packets you know there's, there's right. the schedule of the project itself it's there's you know everybody there's competing priorities of what um, what gets presented and what doesn't get presented so um, I think it's, it's something that is out there for consideration for these remaining funds that um, you know, the board's been very, very focused on and, and conservative with releasing those to pay for improvements um, in the project. So I, it's something that, like Lauren said, we're trying to get the final numbers to, to present as an option. Um, and it just it's taken a while to get that because we've been focused quite frankly on things that were more critical to the schedule of the mm -hmm. project. And yes. That's probably that excuse, but it's, it, you know. Frankly. It doesn't mean it's any less important. Yeah. yeah. So is that, is that in your list of, is this area the tw line items 20, 21, 22, the total about uh, $505,000 right now? Yeah, that's what we're, we're trying to, to firm up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, I, 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 I understand. I, I think we have the same goal. It's just right, but how we get there. So then, um, so I think your concern is if we keep approving these, maybe we not have the money to touch where you're concerned. Yeah. I, Possibly. I, I, yeah. Yes. I mean, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're it, it would be hard for me to vote for the screen and the remodeling of those two rooms without, old, like prior to that voting, even if you don't know the number, you say you over, you know, you do 2X and the board says, okay, well, you, like you have to, I know there's money set aside, but like, I feel like it's in the wrong order. I don't know. Help me out, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I well, I, I think you know? we can all agree that no matter what your budget is, you can always find ways to go over a budget. I mean, the needs are always more than the total. So that's where you're coming from is, yeah. are we going to hit a point to where either we want to you know, give some of this money back to the voters because, say, you know, there's and share some of this benefit that we had with things coming in lower, and, you know, which is an option for, to, for some amount of it. And the other is that, you know, we have, we, we spend it and then we find something that's more important to us that would, will make us regret approving something before. I mean, that, now I think we've had that discussion several but times. But this is but, just, for me, another list of deferred maintenance that we just need to address. Right, but to her point, is that screen is not deferred maintenance. No. It's a it's a scope ad for additional capability and then I mean if that's the hang up, if that screen is the hang up then well, no, it's, the, it's, the it's, biggest it's a, problem is that I want the screen, right? I see benefit in the screen yeah. and I want the screen, but I feel I would I, I, mean, I, so, I would need before I could vote for the screen, I would need to know like now I know that all of the other areas are touched. I got that. So I feel better about that. Then I also would feel like, okay, when when will we have the number for the, like, will we have the number for addressing this classroom next, uh, by the next meeting? And like, yes. then it would be like a deadline to me. Like we would, no. that would be the next thing we voted on. And so that's, I think, where, you know, to your point, Kai, it's, it, it's just a little, um, we've, based on the previous directions in the board, that 
the direction you've taken is to present things as they become. Kind of, this is your last chance. If you don't do it now, either you can't do it because of construction sequencing or, you know, it costs or whatever. So everything else has, that's, we've got those kind of, those dates, you know, approved by this date, approved by this date. So that, that's kind of, I guess, an explanation of why certain things have been presented to the board ahead of other things. To answer your question about the cost, yes, the only thing we're waiting on is um, final costs on the furniture that we're looking at, and um, that, that should, we should have that before the December board meeting, but like Lauren alluded to, it's not schedule critical because that CTE work likely can't happen until way down the road. Um, because it, it needs to happen when school is not in session, unless you can read the classrooms, um, which is a possibility. It's just, but it's not schedule critical in terms of the board could wait and see you know, how the budget's looking at or evaluate other things on that list. You know, there's other, a few other things on that list that haven't you know, come up for, you know, hey, this is, you know, a timeline that, that needs to be looked at. So um, it's not a perfect science, and I think that's what makes it understandably so difficult for you guys, because there are a lot of variables in when do you approve things, when do you have, yeah, how do you vote for 30 now when you know you want but 400 later? I, I, I get it. Could you use your bill of your furniture and things like that to offset the cost of that? Is that a possibility? No. That's not the plan. Yeah. Um, we're, not, we're not talking high quality stuff here. But. Anyways. This conversation just further tells me how much we need to finish that master plan. Yeah, it's part of the, the master plan would inform all of this discussion. Can I move on? I'm sorry. Okay. So on the minibus, just letting you know that we were notified earlier this week that the two we can now order the 2022 SPED minibus that we wanted to get all along. We temporarily had a lease for the 2018 that we're using currently, but it's just not the right configuration for, uh, and Jill has talked to me about that. It's, it's, uh, it was, it was a, a gap fill, I guess to say, and so it'll go back to Midwest and then we'll have to order um, this other bus. We're not buying it. It's a three year lease and, um, I think we've talked about this previously, you might have forgotten about it, but my plan was to sign the contract, get this lease going, it's around $12,839 a year for three years. And then at the end of that, we do have the option of purchasing the bus if we like it a lot, I mean, or we just start another lease. So that's why I, my plan is to sign the contract and, and uh, get that ball rolling, at least so that we can, in a couple months, we can get that minibus um, for the students and the staff. Uh, this Friday uh, on the, at 1.30, we're having our third annual Veterans Day program in the East Gym. Put a lot of effort into that. Um, that went, we've been meeting with the VFW. We have five uh, quilts to hand out to veterans. And what's really, you might have read in the paper, one of the nicest things about this is the, veteran, the VFW themselves select the honorees. It's not done by by me or by the school district and so they're honoring their own and it's real nice if you get a chance to see it the music is incredible um, both the choir and the the band play together uh, it's about a little over an hour long program uh, but it's it's really a very nice uh, day all the students it's on a friday it's actually the you know friday and so all the students at the high school have an opportunity to watch and participate. Uh, just letting you know, and we, we pro I've mentioned this before, but the Beatty sound system is um, once again been destroyed. We found that out, unfortunately, just a few days before homecoming. And uh, we're going to have to do something with the speakers. Uh, we're going to meet with a couple companies and do some testing. And I mean, if there's anybody in the board that wants to go along and hear some of these sound systems, I would be glad to help that out. It's just frustrating. 
the speakers that are currently on the light pole, they're just, they, they can't manage what we need to do down there. They're, I don't even know how old they were, but I fixed them up twice, and I'm not going to fix them up a third time. That's really where we're at. And, and so we'll be looking at something there. As we put, then when we bought the, purchased the new light poles. They, we had to get the bracket to put on those poles. Yeah. Okay, so that was just putting yeah, the old speakers on the mm -hmm. new. Yeah, it wasn't new speakers. It was the existing speakers, yeah. Frustrating. So when you say they're destroyed, they're, is it, did something happen to them? Or it, they, the, well, they generally what happens them? is, what happens is something takes place. It could be a, a, a shrillness, like a referee's whistle. That go, is, Forrest can probably attest to this, but that's <coughs> what's happened. And it just, we just, there's just hardly anything left there besides this the real monotone sound. Uh, no bass, nothing like that. And uh, we have a really nice setup up in the press box, you know, as far as the, 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 the there, but it's, it's the speakers themselves that we need to look at. I mean, is there any way to that, that sounds like something that could happen like on five day old speakers what you just described i mean what is, how do you prevent that from happening with i think it's the quality of the speaker would be part of it They're, those are cheap They're, well i would imagine that there's i, I would be all interested in whoever's looking at it to investigate is there any way for protective oh, yeah. software wise yeah, just yeah. To, well, well, I, not to I, send a signal to the speakers, <laughs> <just> <laughs> the speakers you but know. That, like Dactronics is a very high quality program. And, I mean, I'm sure. You, I mean, you get all sorts of levels of, of, of speakers, and I don't know what their warranty is on that, and, or the yeah, extended I mean, warranty. I mean, yeah, you just don't want to. Right. What you just described sounds like it can happen any time, and yeah. given how many times we use them, it, it's the quality. So anyway, it's it's something that we're going to continue to work on. Yeah. Um, the Academic Center Open House, um, I, I kind of maybe got it. I said maybe we should put together a committee. This is not the ribbon cutting activity. What we're talking about is opening up the, the new addition on an evening, you know, like at five o'clock, just letting people walk through it and people from DLR and McCown Gordon would be glad to be there to you know, help answer questions or we could too. They would provide some refreshments, you know, light refreshments, but just an evening to walk around and look at it. Probably sometime um, in, in mid-January, you know, have the furniture in, We've, we're already moved in kind of thing. Uh, but this is not what we call the, the official ribbon cutting promotion where we're, uh, we still have another phase to finish. So this would be a lighter opportunity, but I'm open. I'm, I mean, Kai, you, you know how to put on a party, so maybe uh, <laughs> maybe we'll engage you in that. And so I can do that or the website, which will. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll do both. Sorry. Uh, the bleachers. I'm just throwing it out there as this one. I mean, um, not that we. The bleachers are what they are. We all know that they're they're old. They probably need to be replaced at some time. Uh, the ADA accessibility is also always an issue. Some of the, the edges of the bleachers are an issue, and they just are what they are. I mean, aren't they the original? Old I think they're the original old bleachers that were on the uh, west side. It was is what I understand. I think they are. Um, I mean, it's not the it's not the amount of bleachers. It's just the what kind of shape they're in. So. What we'd like to do, and I, I, I put some pictures in there for you guys on site, but obviously we would like to get them up higher, you know, with the ramps, the ADA accessibility. Um, these would, you know, we'd also probably have to look at the pad. Um, the pad that's currently entered is crumbling and is kind of leaning toward the east a little bit. If you look at them, the bleachers are starting to drop on the east side, so it needs a little bit of of work there um, to make them better. So, so would you um, take the existing bleachers, like the home bleachers, and put them on the it, it would, We looked at that just really inexpensive, and they won't fit um, because there's just not enough room from the track to Main Street. Yeah. It, it, we would really be, it, it just won't fit. Now, could they cut them down and, and make that work? Perhaps, but it would be very expensive. But that, that's just the thought. So can you we, sell? Is there a market for selling them? 
Uh, they have people that will take those. Yeah, take them, but will they? Um, they, buy them? they probably had a pretty not take them. They they dismantle them and reuse them, and you'll get something out of them. I thought, I thought some of them ended up at the fairgrounds. Oh, um, I don't know like that. The original yeah, from that side right a long time ago ended up at the fairgrounds. Mm-hmm. Probably the old visiting bleachers. Yeah, I think they. For some reason, they look like old football bleachers stuff too. Along the road, around the rodeo. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's just another project. <laughs> you know, can we get by with what we have? Sure we can. But I just think there's there's some things to look at there. So that all goes in the master plan? I think part of it, yeah. It, it needs to be part of that. It's it's a, it's something that we could probably pay for out of capital outlay. I just can't do, a, I can't do everything out of capital outlay, you know, but I could probably do something like that. If we plan accordingly, did they talk about doing, or did you talk about the possibility? You know how some schools have um, their concessions and they have stuff underneath what you can even well, take that's, shelter. Like if that's new bleachers. Into- I mean, if you were to put them on the home side, you definitely would want to do something like that. But the visiting bleachers way too small. Yeah. Way too small. They're, I mean, we're talking seating of three hundred and fifty people, not yeah, yeah, eighteen hundred. But that's what I have. That's all I have. This time. Uh, what about this? Oh, oh, this? No, that's like okay. that's my right. Okay. Okay. That comes later. Sorry. Right. Thanks for asking. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> With that, we'll move to Tanya, the super assistant superintendent's update. All right. Uh, we do have professional development on Thursday. We have a guest speaker coming in. Some of our middle school staff had gone to. Um, <coughs> a professional development retreat over the summer and heard this gentleman speak. His name is Tom Cody and he is coming to speak on Thursday at our professional development day. His his goal, he's a former teacher, his wife's a former teacher, he is all about being, being the top. So he's going to come and talk to us about being a top 20 district, top 20 school, top 20 teacher, top 20 students. So um, it's very very inspiring, but also connecting with what's going on, you know, in education today and social emotional issues. So, um, Tom Cody, he comes highly recommended from our middle school staff. He was selected um, by this group to speak at this summer retreat in Colorado, and he was so fabulous that they recommended that he could speak to us. So he's coming out, and he'll be here for Thursday. So we're excited about that. Um, Also, I've been working with our Professional Development Council. We've been exploring an early release option. And this is for many reasons, and I've just put some things in in here. We're we're just at the beginning of the exploratory phase. But part of the reason this has come up is because what we expect our students to do, you know, we model to them how, how how they learn, how they can continually learn, apply what they know, Um, reflect on it, readjust, you know, and we're not modeling that as teachers. So in order to make things equitable with all buildings, our middle school has a great amount of time during their school day to get together and meet on some of these topics, looking at um, assessments, looking at our data and trying to improve. They have time during their day. Uh, The high school has a late start on Wednesday mornings. It's a very short amount of time and it's not really an adequate time for them to meet to determine what do our students need and what how can we best provide that. And then our elementary staff has the least amount of time at all. Um, they have, they're on a rotational basis so their team plan actually takes the time of their personal plan and it's on a rotational basis and Kristen's out there she could tell you it's not much time at all. Um, and we're asking teachers to do all of these things using data, but we're not giving them time to do it on top of everything else that they do. And so we're trying to find something that is equitable across the whole district that we can use to help our teachers look at this data, inform their instruction so that we can use that information and and adequately meet the needs of our students. And the PDC has been really excited about this. We are still working on the specifics of it, so I do not have specifics for you tonight. Uh, but I will be bringing those in December. 
but I just wanted to give you a heads up that we are working on this and we'll we'll bring you some more information in December. Uh, so a question on that. Um, so you know when we start school at the beginning of the year we have certain days I mean are we do we have the appropriate number of days there are <coughs> system or are there other you know is how does that range are we on the low end of that or on the high end of that or how does that it's pretty comparable to others but they have time built into their day where they can use for this and we don't and um, our days at the very beginning of the school year are to prepare us you know, there's a lot of instruction on just new programs we have going on, um, things that we have to put into place, nuts and bolts of starting the school year. Then we have October, November, February, and April. And those are often filled up with, if we have a new program we have to learn, um, we have instruction on MAMP training that has to take place. Um, different buildings have different initiatives. So right now the high school is focusing on, oh gosh, we're going to be moving into our new building. Um, we have to pack. We have to do all these things. We have to learn about our new building. So I don't feel like we have adequate professional development time. Now those, those big long days are great. You have to use them appropriately. Often we need, you know, we need to provide professional development that, that is a full day long. You know, it's not going to be taking care of it just an hour or two. Um, and so we need those type of days also. But we need that time, that that more frequent time where we can look at our data. Because by the time you, you get to your professional development day in October, you've already taken these assessments back in September. Well, have we had time to analyze them yet? And what good is it going to do if we wait till October to get together to figure out and analyze and work with our teams and plan vertically, instruction, and then... Do we get to implement it? How did it work? Well, we won't find out anything till November or February or April. 